More than 30 years after the Islamic Revolution, Iran's internal politics are still bewildering the mainstream media. For many, it's not even clear what form of government Iran has. The country is a republic with elected institutions such as a parliament, yet it's also a theocracy with a number of religious institutions. In theory, the mixture of divine rule and popular will could work, However, in practice, the system has transformed Iran into a kleptocracy with many factions fighting for power and influence at the expense of the wider population. In this report, we will delve into Iran's version of the Game of Thrones and explain the country's internal political power struggle. My name is Shirvan and this is Caspian Report. If you wish to support the show, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Caspian Report. Following the 1979 revolution, two factions struggled over the political future of Iran. On one side was the Republican faction with various ideologies ranging from secularism and socialism to communism. They believed that the legitimacy of a government depended on popular will. On the other side was the theocratic faction. They believed that legitimacy stemmed from the divine regulations. This blend of republicanism with religious authority is what forms the core ideology of Iran. Shortly after the revolution, by means of a referendum, a new constitution was drafted and ratified. The Islamic constitution was based on the works of Khomeini as described in his book Islamic Government governance of the jurist. The new constitution remodeled the country and laid the foundation of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Immediately following this, two things happened. A war broke out with neighboring Iraq and a profound dispute erupted within the ruling elite of Iran. Under the veil of war, Iranian clerics, led by Khomeini, moved against their republican countrymen. Over the course of the Iran-Iraq war, Iranians witnessed Saddam's war crimes and atrocities from without and severe oppression and persecution by the Iranian clerics from within. It is during these confusing times that a number of Iranian guerrilla groups emerged. At the same time, the leading republican politicians and cultural figures were arrested, kidnapped and tortured. The Communist Tudeh Party was the first to get banned when nearly 10,000 of their members and sympathizers were arrested in 1982. Over the next few years, the other Republican-based parties were shut down. Anyone who spoke up against the system disappeared or was publicly executed. In 1988 alone, an estimated 30,000 Iranians were executed by the authorities. At the background of these events, Khomeini purged the educational system of Western and non-Islamic influences and brought it in line with political Islam. By the end of the war, hundreds of thousands of Iranian intellectuals had left their homeland. This intellectual migration and transformation became known as the Iranian Cultural Revolution. In essence, the theocratic faction had purged the republicans from the political arena, and since then the revolution, which started out as a reformist movement, was dubbed the Islamic Revolution. The expulsion of republicans from the political landscape lasted until the late 1980s. In the meantime, Khomeini reformed the government. The supreme leader, in an effort to maintain a power balance between elected institutions and religious authority, created a number of religious institutions that were interwoven with the country's legislative branches. For example, the Assembly of Experts was established in 1982 and all 88 seats were filled with conservative clerics. The members of the Assembly were elected by the people, but the election candidates were regulated by the newly founded Guardian Council. This 12-member council was tasked with reviewing the candidates for the Assembly of Experts, the Parliament and even the President himself. The members of the Guardian Council were handpicked by the Supreme Leader, who in turn was elected and supervised by the Assembly of Experts. This fusion of theocracy and democracy is what forms the Islamic Republic of Iran. And what makes it even more complicated is that there is no shred of transparency. The meeting of the Guardian Council and Assembly of Experts 
are held behind closed doors and its discussions are kept strictly confidential. What's more is that this cycle of conservatives produces a gridlock system, meaning no matter who gets elected or how many seats are controlled, the Iranian parliament does not have the power to truly change anything in the country. The real power rests with the religious bodies. The integration of religious institutions within the government created a deceptive form of democracy. Nowadays it seems as if Iranians choose their own government, yet when all the options are derived from one source, then the choices are merely empty gestures. This appearance of democracy creates legitimacy for the clerical faction, while in reality it changes absolutely nothing. Thus, by controlling the assembly of experts, the Guardian Council, as well as the seat of the Supreme Leader, the clerical faction created a gridlock system, meaning they could remain in power indefinitely despite the will of the people. This is important to understand because it means that the Iranian parliament and even the government are not a true reflection of the Iranian society. Iran's internal state of affairs grew even more complicated following the death of the revolutionary supreme leader Khomeini. At first, Ayatollah Montazari was the designated successor to Ayatollah Khomeini. However, since his protests over the executions during the reign of Khomeini, Montazari was forced to resign his position. In his stead, Khamenei became Iran's new supreme leader. The dispute that emerged between Montazari and Khamenei resulted in the division of the clerical elite. Two coalitions emerged from the split. On one side were the moderate republicans, better known as the moderates, led initially by Ayatollah Montazari. The moderate coalition believes that the elected institution and the constitution stand above religious authority which includes the supreme leader, the guardian council and the assembly of experts. The moderates also support economic liberalization and want to interact with the West and engage in trade with the world markets. However, the moderates are quite conservative when it comes down to social reforms. Some of the most important moderate leaders include President Rouhani and two former presidents Refsanjani and Khatami. On the other side were the pragmatic theocrats or simply known as the conservatives led by Ayatollah Khamenei. The conservatives advocate that the religious authority stands above elected republican institutions. They believe that the clash between Iran and the West is unavoidable and they promote conservative Islamic social values. However, they also support economic liberalization as long as it doesn't hinder the Muslim social values of the society. At the backdrop of the split, the Revolutionary Guard sided with Khamenei's coalition. This 125,000 strong independent militia had earlier emerged as an influential institution following the Iraq-Iran war. In many ways, the Revolutionary Guard is similar to the historic Ottoman Janissaries and the Roman Praetorian Guard. The military institution has its own intelligence network, political candidates, finances and even stocks in many of Iran's industries. Khamenei holds much sway over the Revolutionary Guard, that is as long as he can fulfill their financial needs. Following the rift in the political elite, a number of economic reforms were implemented. Nearly all of Iran's political power was centralized towards the capital Tehran. Along with a centralized government came a government-funded economic model. Furthermore, new amendments were made to the country's constitution, the office of prime minister was abolished and the country became a presidential republic. As more and more power was streamlined to the leadership in Tehran, Ayatollah Khamenei soon learned that the presidency posed the greatest threat to the authority of the supreme leader. As a result, Khamenei was locked in a political power struggle with then-president Refsanjani, who had managed to stay out of the feud between the conservatives and the moderates. As the power struggle between Refsanjani and Khamenei intensified over the next few years, the president moved closer towards the moderate coalition. Eventually, the competition reached its peak during the 1997 presidential elections. Moderate candidate Khatami, who was an ally of Refsanjani, emerged as the victor as he received nearly 70% of the votes. This victory, however, came at a cost. 
irreversible damage was done to the relations between the presidency and the supreme leader. Either way, Khatami turned out to be an unprecedented reformer in the short history of the Islamic Republic. He improved the rule of law and increased the living standards for Iranians. The president even attempted to weaken the grip of the theocratic political institutions. Ultimately, however, Khatami failed in this final effort, and his willingness to compromise with the conservatives had upset many of his allies of the moderate coalition. In fact, Many members of the coalition were dissatisfied with the lack of social reforms and argued for even more meaningful change. The relations within the moderates deteriorated to such an extent that a new splinter coalition emerged. Khatami mostly maintained his moderate republican support base, but the remaining members reorganized as the radical republicans or the reformists for short. This new faction, led by Musafi, advocates for a free market economy and wants to fully normalize relations with the West. They have liberal views on social values and support full gender equality. This new class of politicians wanted rapid reforms to strengthen republican institutions and pursue a policy of secularism with a free press and the release of political prisoners. In essence, the newly established reformists became the very same faction they had purged in the 1980s. These demands, as basic as they are, were deemed too much by the other factions. Some conservatives even perceived the reformist policy as a threat to the foundation of the Islamic Republic. Thus, as a countermeasure, the most radical conservatives regrouped under the leadership of Ayatollah Masba Yazdi and formed the Radical Theocrats, or also known as the Hardliners. The hardliners are closely allied with the conservative faction and believe that the elected institutions contradict Islamic traditions. They believe that all institutions and citizens must serve the religious authority. They advocate for a decentralized economic policy and are strong supporters of social justice. Furthermore, they promote conservative Islamic social and moral values, but this group also believes that the clash between Iran and the West is unstoppable and that Iran should pursue to form a regional hegemony. Masba Yazdi nominated Ahmadinejad as the presidential candidate for the hardline coalition and despite widespread allegations of fraud, Ahmadinejad won the elections in 2005. During his presidency, Ahmadinejad marginalized the radical republicans by jailing their most prominent activists, journalists and politicians. The repression of radical republicans reached its peak in the aftermath of the 2009 presidential elections. Allegations of fraud overshadowed the re-election of Ahmadinejad. Hundreds of thousands of Iranians who voted for reformist Musafi took to the streets and expressed their anger at the authorities. This new wave of demonstrations quickly became known as the Green Movement. What's more is that Iran had not experienced such large protests since the Islamic Revolution. The government obviously responded with violence, protesters were beaten down, arrested and tortured. The leader of the Green Movement and the Republican coalition, Musavi, was accused of inciting unrest and later he was taken into custody and put under house arrest where he remains to this day. Following this, his Republican party was banned from the country. Ahmadinejad's brutal crackdown on the Green Movement lost him many supporters and continued to haunt his remaining years in office. Since the hardline conservative coalition was deemed too repressive and since the radical republicans were banned, the only lawful alternative was Khatami's moderate coalition. Khatami cooperated with Musafi during the 2009 elections and managed to exploit the losses of the radical republicans and the hardline conservatives. This became apparent when Rouhani, a close ally of Khatami, won the presidential elections in 2013. The election of Rouhani is just the latest development in the modern internal political power struggle of Iran. This struggle between various coalitions is more complicated now than it was in the 1980s and 1990s. Back then, the coalitions had extreme opposing ideologies ranging from communists to liberals to clerics, but nowadays the differences are harder to detect. 
In economic terms, most of the factions seek some form of liberalization. However, in social terms, the policy of the reformists differs so greatly from the other political groups that the conservatives and the hardliners cannot fathom it and the moderates cannot stomach it. Ultimately, Khamenei has to maintain his grip on power by accommodating both theocracy and republicanism. The supreme leader cannot eliminate republican ideas, considering that many of the revolutionary leaders adhere to republicanism, but he also cannot sanction the transition in that direction. This was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan. I want to express my special gratitude to the following contributors on Patreon. Their support and that of many others have made this report possible. And if you want to support the show and see more original content like this, please visit our Patreon page in the description. For now, thank you for watching, take care and sarol.